Before we get started with this video, there's one thing that I need to clear up, and that is that psychological anthropology is not the combination of psychology and anthropology. I made this mistake once, and I will never make it again, and I'm here to prevent you from making the same mistake that I did. So now that you know that, let's actually get into A, what is psychological anthropology, and also a little bit of the differences between psychology and psychological anthropology. Now, as many of you guys know, anthropology has four main disciplines, and these disciplines are biology, archaeology, culture, and linguistics. Now, a big mistake that I think gets made pretty often is thinking that psychological anthropology is actually a branch of biological anthropology, when this is not in fact the case at all. It's a branch of cultural anthropology, which I can genuinely say really surprised me, but surprises people all all the time. Now we're going to start off with the basic definition of psychological anthropology, which I do in all these types of videos. And then I'm going to break it down and really give you some of the key things that you guys should remember moving forward about psychological anthropology. So I have the definition pulled up right here. So I'm just going to read that real quick. Psychological anthropology is the study of psychological topics using anthropological concepts and methods. Among these areas of interest are personal identity, selfhood, subjectivity, memory, consciousness, emotion, motivation, cognition, madness, and mental health. Also, sorry about the dog in the background. If you can hear that, it's not mine. I wish it was. <laughs> and basically what this is saying is that psychological anthropology studies this intersection between culture and mental mechanisms, what's happening in the mind, all that kind of thing. Another thing too that I want to say here paired with this definition is that generally speaking, psychology is rooted in Western culture, whereas psychological anthropology really is this like cross-cultural perspective. And so the definition here is inherently looking at how psychology is impacted by different cultures around the world, not really like rooted in this Western construction of psychology that many of us often think of. Okay, so the next thing that I want you guys to know about psychological anthropology is that psychological anthropology has this focus towards person-centered interviewing and just centering the individual in general. Anthropology as a field has so many different research methods. If you're curious about those, I'll link a video where I talk about them. But person-centered interviewing has a lot to do with really understanding everything that you can about one person or a very small, very, very small group of people. And so the difference here really comes down to centralizing the culture or centralizing the individual. And psychological anthropology really does try to balance both, but it has this emphasis on understanding the individual more so than the culture as a whole. Now, the best way that I can describe this is in a person-centered interview, how a question might be asked. So let's take two questions. The first one being, what do you think about marriage in your culture, right? Like how does your culture think about marriage? The second one is how do you feel about marriage? The second question, how do you feel about marriage is a little bit more aligned with these ideas of psychological anthropology because you're positioning this individual person's opinion within the culture itself versus like asking how they perceive the culture to perceive marriage. I hope that makes sense. Now, like I said, psychological anthropology has this balance between cultural understanding and individual understanding, but it's definitely more focused on individual understanding. Now, the next thing that we're gonna be looking at is how within psychology as a field, not psychological anthropology, psychology, you lose a lot of the everyday nuance. Whereas within psychological anthropology, you get all of that day-to-day -day nuance that still has a big impact on who a person is and their psychology and behavior and all that good stuff. Within psychology, you standardize a lot of variables, right? You're looking at larger populations more often than not. You are trying to think about how to control for a lot of different things to get one conclusion that applies to a lot of people, which is a great thing. Psychology is awesome. I'm a huge fan. Honestly, wish I could have studied it more in school. That would have been great. However, the difference here is that in psychological anthropology, we want 
that day-to-day complexity. We want those day-to-day differences, how things vary from situation to situation, from person to person. And if you standardize and control for that, you lose a lot of the layers and a lot of the complexity that is human behavior and human psychology and psychological anthropology really does have this push and this focus not to lose all those variables because in some ways that's just as important to understanding one or a few or many people the best way that i can describe this is you wake up feeling different every single day like some days you're gonna have a rough day or rough week and other weeks are gonna be like the best week of your life and if you think about asking like a bunch of people the same question in the same week like you don't capture all of that right but if you look at one person for a long time you see that change and who they are more deeply and I think you can almost make more concrete solutions but the cost there is that it's absolutely about like one or a few people now this next point about psychological anthropology that I would want you guys to know is very related to this the previous one that I just said and that is psychological anthropology work is incredibly ethnographic now if you don't know what an ethnography is that's totally fine go check out this video and then come back come back say hey return to this point in the video um but ethnography has this um undercurrent of staying with groups of people or a specific person for an extended period of time and by doing this you get to know a lot about specific people and specific cultures on a very deep layered complex level as I've been saying throughout this whole video and so you get to do the things that I just talked about which is see people change from situation to situation right understand all these different parts of who they are and their culture and their family and their friends traditions etc and see how that impacts their psychology their identity their mental health all these things that are really important to understanding a person there's this like long-term longitudinal thing happening there that's really really important and a huge piece of psychological anthropology now at the end of this video i want to share with you guys two psychological anthropology books ethnographies i think technically yeah two psychological anthropology ethnographies that you could totally read again to all my returners apologies i've talked about these before i haven't read like a huge abundance of psychological anthropology books and ethnographies as much as I wish I could have but those two are actually going to be Tuhami by Vincent Cropanzano and then The Pastoral Clinic by Angela Garcia. Keep in mind they do handle some pretty intense topics so the pastoral clinic especially so look into some of those before reading because I don't want anyone to be surprised or anything by the content of these works Um, but they're really great and they are the first works in psychological anthropology that I got to experience. Tuhami especially does a great job showing and demonstrating how to center on one individual and how spending years with one person uh, gives you a good understanding of who they are. And there's all these like really great psychological anthropology theoretical frameworks embedded so deeply in both of these works. So yeah, okay. Those are my recommendations, and that's actually all I have to say about psychological anthropology. Now, as always, all of my sources are going to be linked in the description box down below because sources are very important. You got to know who your source is, though, if you can trust me, that's another big anthropology theme. But um, yeah, that's actually all that I have to say. Um, I hope you guys are all having the best Sunday ever. And as I've been alluding to for the last several weeks, we have some changes coming on this channel, obviously, because I'm graduating. Um, So just continue to let me know what you guys want to see. And I will do my very best to get that out to you. All right, you guys have the best day and the best week. I'll see you all next Sunday. Bye.